Welcome everyone. Thanks a lot for staying with us. You're watching a special presentation on CNN News 18. I'm Shivani Gupta and I'm joining you live from Ayodhya. This is the city that is gearing up in less than 48 hours for the Pran Pratishthan of the Ram Lala Idol in the new Bhavya Ram Mandir. This moment is something that has been in the making for 500 years. Also, it has come after four years, almost five years of the judgment that came in 2019, which was a seminal judgment in itself. With this moment now, of course, the city is gearing up for a moment that is going to be remembered for a very, very long time. The Pran Pratishthan is being celebrated as a second Diwali in Ayodhya. There are a lot of programs going on, a lot of people who have come from all across the country to participate. They are contributing in whatever way they can, either by making arts or by organizing langars or bhandars all across the city. Anybody who wants to do anything is welcome in Ayodhya. But from now onwards, of course, the focus will shift on the ceremony and on the Prime Minister arriving on January 22. He is going to be the Yajman of the ceremony. Speaking of the Prime Minister, he's been holding an 11-day Anushthan ahead of this ceremony and he's been going across to temples, especially in southern India, that have a special relevance as far as Lord Ram's story is concerned, the story of Ramayan is concerned and his life is concerned. What does that really mean? We'll focus on the symbolism of this moment in Ayodhya that is being celebrated as a national moment and also how none other than the head of the secular state of India, the Prime Minister, is really leading this from the front. What does that mean for Indian politics and not just because this movement has been inextricably linked to Indian politics, but for politics and Indian polity moving forward. All that will come with our special guest joining us in just a bit. But take a look at the sights and sounds around Ayodhya and how it is gearing up. This moment of the Pran Pratishthan in Ayodhya is being celebrated as a national movement. With that is the political shift to the right complete in India. We'll take that forward with our guest joining us. I want to go across to Dr. Bharat H. Barai, who's chairman of the U.S.-India Community Foundation and is a special invitee for the Ayodhya program. Advaita Kala, author and political analyst, George Kurian, political analyst, all joining us from outside the studio. I do thank you for your time. I also want to introduce the guests who are with me in Ayodhya. Swami Yogi Devnath is Dharam Guru. He's come from Kutch in Gujarat, right? He's come all the way. He's going to be part of the ceremony as well. And Sarbhuj Gaur Das is president of ISKCON in Ayodhya. Bhot bhot dhanavad hamare saath jurnne ke liye. Dr. Barai, I want to come to you first up. But before I get to the topic I'm discussing today, whether we are seeing an irreversible shift to the right in Indian polity, I want to first begin by asking you your thoughts on the moment, on the occasion of January 22 that you have been invited for as well. This is a renaissance of Hindu civilization. We had a flourishing civilization for thousands of years. But during the Mughal rule and during the British Mughal rule, we were not able to practice our religion freely. After the independence in 1947, yes, Hindus were able to practice their religion. However, under the name of secularism, Hindus were very much constrained. In fact, I have to tell you, we are able to practice Hinduism better in USA than it was practiced for almost 50 years in India. But in last 10 years, under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi, who is secular, but he is also respectful for Hindu, and Hindu revivalism has started. It has started in USA, probably in UK, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, everywhere too. So I'm very glad that Hindus are taking their rightful place in the civilization and in the world. 
You know, we are seeing visuals, Dr. Barai, of the Prime Minister visiting many temples, ancient temples in southern India. He's just taken a holy dip in Rameswaram not too long ago, till not too long ago. Or even when Narendra Modi was elected in 2014, could people have imagined that the Indian Prime Minister will be seen wearing his religion and his, uh, his uh, you know, divinity, his religiosity on his sleeve? But many people criticize him as well. What do you make of what the Prime Minister is doing, the symbolism of that, because he is head of a secular state, and the criticism that also comes his way? You know, this is a very wrong concept. Secularism means state does not give preference to a particular religion, but the president or prime minister or members of the parliament, they can practice it freely. In the United States, before the president takes the oath of office, in that morning, they go usually to the church. Same way, the king of England, he is the one who is the head of the uh, church. So, in Europe or in USA, the president, the prime ministers, whosoever are the heads of the state, they go and attend the religious event. So, yes, Nehru and his clan did not do it. They should have done it. This is a country where 80% or more population is Hindu. So, Prime Minister Modi is doing very appropriate by practicing his own religion. That does not mean that he is disrespectful to other people. So, the, you're saying basically what we've been, of course, discussing for many decades in India, that there's a warped sense of secularism or a warped concept of secularism that was uh, in practice in India. Advaita, your thoughts? You know, the Prime Minister visited the Ganges, took a dip in the Holy Ganges. He is beating through the Rudraksh. He has done this before. He has been criticized before. He's, been, he's doing this again today. He's observing an 11-day Anushthan. From the fact that he is even going to be at the ceremony to the fact that he is today visiting temples and openly talking about what this moment means for India, it's going to cause a little bit of heartburn to many. But do you believe that we have shifted away from that politics, that warped secularism or that pseudo-secularism politics and it has been an irreversible shift now? Absolutely. First of all, Jai Shri Ram to you, uh, Shivani, you're in uh, Ayodhya Ji, which is... Uh, such a moment at such a momentous time. So you are truly blessed to be there uh, during this time. And uh, Jai Shri Ram to my fellow pa panelists. I think this is a this is a joyous occasion. It's a time of, of joy. It's a time of uh, you know civilizational realization and renaissance. As was so rightly pointed out by our previous guest. And Prime Minister Modi has played an essential role in this. And the important role that he has played has been even on a subliminal and a psychological level. The kind of uh, hesitance that we felt and that we were raised to feel in expressing our faith is something that he has shown through example of how you can do away with that. And I think that is a very powerful message for those of us who are practicing Hindus, but uh, you know have felt conscious in the past and have been made to feel conscious. And especially for the younger generation to see that you can believe in progressive ideals, in development, or in uh, you can be the fastest growing economy on earth and yet be very rooted in your civilizational ethos. And I think that is the most powerful message that is coming from this uh, occasion. And really it's a message that is going to last for generations and uh, full gratitude to Prime Minister Modi for leading that with such dignity and resolve and fairness. And I think that has been the biggest example for all of us who are fortunate enough to witness this moment. You know, many believe, Advaita, this moment wouldn't have been possible if we hadn't had a BJP government for as long as we've had. I leave that question aside. But do you believe that this is here to stay? Has there been a shift oh, that is irreversible or if tomorrow a government was to change? But, but if tomorrow a government was to change, in opposition, a lot of opposition parties also play soft Hindutva. But in government, they don't do so. We've seen it recently in Karnataka, for example. Their agenda is very clear. So tomorrow, if a government was to change, are we going to slip back to left liberalism, pseudo-secularism? I think that ship has sailed and has sailed a long way off. That is why I emphasized prime ministers 
contribution to Hindu consciousness in this country and not necessarily the political play that this will have. Because I think what he has done has also enabled a shift in Hindu consciousness in India and in Bharat rather. And that this is something that is going to stay irrespective of political fortunes, whether they come and go. As for, you know, the polity moving to the right, I think what has happened is that the pseudo secularist idea of faith and the individual is something that has gone to the extreme left. It's become very negative. They have nothing positive to share. They're always looking down on being Indian, on being Hindu. And frankly, the public of this country has had enough of that. We're not here being triumphant but we're here saying that a living civilization and we have every right to embrace that and to acknowledge that and identify with it most importantly and I think this is the shift that the Prime Minister has achieved in the consciousness and Hindu consciousness in this country and I would not only restrict it in uh, to the dynamics of Hindu versus this faith or that faith I would say Hindu as in a cultural and a civilizational identity, which transcends